Today on Keto and Friends, we're gonna speak with Nisha Berry from Nisha Loves It. And you'll see why we love her right, right after, after this. this. Hey, what's up family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos, we do product reviews, we talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com. That's where you're gonna find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon in that way. Every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. So today on Keto and Friends, we're gonna interview Nisha Berry. I think a lot of people find Nisha the way I did, which is I started watching Dr. Barry. Yep. And then you're like, oh, wow, he's married and he has a wife that is also on keto and she has a channel. But then you actually start watching Nisha and you're like, why the heck have I not been watching her all along? Because she is so beautiful, so amazing. She has great advice. She is a nurse herself. Mm -hmm. And she is just a down to earth, cool person. Yeah. So we're gonna leave the links for all of her different channels and social medias down below. You can also catch her doing live streams with Dr. Barry, but we got a chance to just sit down and talk to her about her Hashimoto's, about uh, raising a baby keto, about being pregnant keto, about what it's like to live with Dr. Barry. So I think what we should do is just jump right into that. And I do want to let you know the first like 30 seconds, the video is a little choppy, but then it clears right up. So just stick with it. Obviously we love Dr. Barry and all the medical advice that he generously shares with the keto community. But when we use phrases like keto lifestyle, it means just that, that there's a life there to live. And sometimes I at least get some tunnel vision when it comes to topics like macros and intermittent fasting. And I almost forget to enjoy the better health that this keto road has le led me to. And Nisha's lifestyle channel, Nisha Loves It, reminds me to do just that. Yeah. She reminds me to live. And she, you know, she really just shares some amazing advice on being a wife and being a mother, as well as some beauty and fashion tips that I need very, very badly. <laughs> so thank you so much for being here, Nisha. Thank you, Joe and Rachel. I'm really excited. I, speaking of fashion, we kind of matched today. I know. I got the memo. I didn't realize that. It was denim day. <laughs> I, I did get the memo. I'm excited. I love it. I love it. Yeah. And I, it's awesome. Yeah. You actually had a recent shopping haul, like video fashion show that was so just lovely. And I thought to myself, wow, I did not realize how much I needed that because all I have been thinking about is just pajama pants and oversized t-shirts. And we, we need that as women to just enjoy some fashion and a changing of seasons. And thank you for bringing that to, to our lives. Well, yeah, I, I'm right there with you though. I've been stuck in sweatpants and t-shirts for, you know, what going on two months now. And uh, I find if I get up and pull myself together and even just put on a little mascara or even a pair of jeans as opposed to leggings, I just, I feel better. I actually get things accomplished and I'm more focused because I'm getting ready to go to work as opposed to just being in the same clothes I went to bed in. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I definitely think it actually helps even with my motivation to stay on track as far as my eating and my eating windows. It's like I, I'm business. There's something about being like just, I don't know, slovenly dressed, which a lot of times I, I'm guilty of, that just kind of gives me permission to go off the wagon. Well, and, and sweatpants are very forgiving where denim jeans will remind you, oh, hey, uh, yeah. Maybe stop stop that snacking that you've been doing because sweatpants and, and scrub pants too when I was a nurse are very forgiving. But when you put those jeans on, they're a really good reminder of where you're actually at. Yes, especially if I need a running start to jump on the bed to zip them up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, in there, yeah. Sadisha, you are such a beautiful soul and you're so talented and you're really accomplished. And the bottom line is we know that you are really 
the person behind the scenes doing everything for Dr. Barry, making sure that all the YouTube videos are going up properly and everything with the Patreon is is working great. What I really like about you though, is you're very real. And it's funny, I was talking to Chris from Keto Chow last night and I'm like, hey, any tips when we talk to Nisha tomorrow? He was like, you guys are gonna love Nisha. She's like the most down to earth person. She's just a blast to hang out with. And so what I wanted to know is what is it that helps you stay so grounded because you seem very, very grounded when I watch your videos or when I see you talking with Dr. Barry on the live streams and stuff like that. How are you staying so grounded all the time? Uh, I think honestly, being in the position I am with the blog and the YouTube channel and Instagram, um, I followed a lot of bloggers for a really long time. And what I saw was a lot of perfect people Mm. or what looked like perfect people. And I just really wanted to do something different and I didn't want to play a part. I wanted people to actually get to know me and to understand where I was coming from and genuinely experience the journey with me. And so it keeps me very accountable to be so open and upfront and honest and raw and vulnerable because when I do that, my followers, subscribers, they give me feedback. Mm -hmm. And they they keep me in line, really, because, I mean, there's days when I don't want to not give up on, uh, you know, the carbs, you know, especially when I was pregnant. It was really hard because cravings are real. And honestly, with breastfeeding, I've had way more cravings. But when I talk to my audience about that stuff, it, it helps me get feedback. It helps me remember why I'm doing it and also give gives them somebody to say, oh, you know, it's not unusual to want something like that. And it's okay if you do fall off, I don't encourage it. (laughs) But you don't have to pick a date to restart. You can restart that minute and you can pick back up where you left off. And I think a lot of people get so stuck when they fall off the wagon and they think they have to do some sort of reboot and you don't, you just pick up where you left off and brush yourself off, start over again. And I just, really want to give my followers a real genuine person who goes through what they go through and they see what I go through and that it is possible to just keep going. Now I before because I I want to ask a question but before I say that I have to share because I am such a fan of your womanhood because you are just a beautiful person that that is vulnerable too and you share your whole experience and I have to say one of the most recent like fall in love with Nisha all over again was she was sitting there um showing us some things that you could eat when you're having a craving and it's for real in the quarantine. tub of protein the puffs. tub of protein puffs <laughs> that tub i'm pretty certain was taller than her five foot two frame like i'm <laughs> i'm pretty sure it's bigger than her and she's just like this is my tub of protein puffs and i just thought that i can totally relate to that so i mean what what you're doing it's it really is coming through i mean you're you're achieving that goal because i'm like that is the real deal yeah because i think about you know i think a lot of people especially if you go into dr barry's like the patreon group on facebook and you see the keto police in there you, you see a lot of people in there saying like well dr barry said you have to eat this and if you have like one cup of coffee you're no longer carnivore so it's nice when you put it out there like hey i'm married to him and i'm not perfect either you know yeah yeah and it's like yeah. i don't think any of us can ever be perfect i mean we try really hard i mean to not you know, overeat. I mean, I don't have problems with going back to carbs, but I definitely have problems with snacking, especially at this yeah. time right now where yeah. it's, you know, two times a day, you know, I'm wanting to eat all the time. So it's nice that right. you could be vulnerable like that. And I think that's what people like about you. I, I think that Ken and I are basically two sides of the same coin. Mm-hmm. It's how I like to see us because he is so very like strict. And he, but he wasn't always that way. And it has been a journey for him as well. Just because he's like that now doesn't mean it's always been like that. And it's, I mean, some people may get to the point where he is and some people may be like me who are just living their lives the best that they can every single day and taking it day by day because not everybody is going to be carnivore. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, no, and, and I think when we do our lives and we talk about carnivore, I always say, you know, this doesn't mean that keto is not good anymore. And then we only talk about meat because that's just not true. Benefits of keto are still just as good. But for some people, 
things do affect them. Like I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to cut out dairy and I'm not happy about it. <laughs> right. You know, that's the part of the journey I'm in right now. And so I'm going to have to address that eventually. And I think a lot of people probably will, but not everybody's there. And some people may never get there, but it's okay. Now I have to say, I really did um, just really cry through uh, one of your recent blog posts where you shared your incredible journey to better health after battling Hashimoto's. Could you share a little bit about how Hashimoto's actually served as a catalyst for your keto carnivore way of life? Well, um, at the time when I was seeing all these symptoms, I, I knew that I needed to change something. I just, I didn't know what, and I was on the medication and that helped like 10% probably. And so I did whole 30 and I did paleo. Um, when I started my blog, I was still paleo. I wasn't even keto yet, but Kenna had started dabbling in it. And I actually happened to do it after I got mono and I had read somebody say that it helps you heal after, you know, injuries or whatever. And I was like, I mean, if I can get over mono, I'm working. I was a labor and delivery nurse. I couldn't sit out for six weeks. So that's when I integrated it. And then I saw the benefits happen within a week. And I was back to work in a week, which if you've ever had mono, you can like, it puts you down mm -hmm. for the count. Yes. But not only was I better from the mono, I saw, I, I lost five pounds of inflammation. Uh, I saw my brain fog improve. My personality was more stable. My anxiety was lower. My depressive state was better. And I was like, oh man, this, this is something and this there is something to this and maybe i should listen to my husband which is not easy for a woman sometimes it is but... not i totally hear you there like hey. it is not <laughs> yeah so i had to had to admit that yeah okay you're right this may be something and so i started just like most people start and you know, lazy dirty keto you know bacon and burgers no, no bun and stuff like that. And I just, over time, I've gotten more strict and more strict and taken things out and self-experimented, which I always really encourage people to do because every person is different. The way I react to a food product or a, a, even leafy vegetables or something is different from how Ken reacts to it. And I've just self-experimented to the point where I pretty much know what I can eat, what I can eat, how I'm going to pay for it if I choose to indulge, mm -hmm. that type of thing. But overall, the main reason I have stuck with it is because of health benefits, yeah. because I've never, I didn't feel this good even in my 20s before I had the Hashimoto symptoms, but I for sure feel like myself again. And that was something that uh, was so heartbreaking about when I first realized that I was sick, is that I had lost not just my health, but I had lost a lot of my core being. Mm -hmm. And so when I got that back, that was like a, just a huge weight off my shoulders to know that it was fixable and kind of sad that it was so easily fixable. Yes. And I just, I wasn't educated. I didn't know. Nobody talks about that or they weren't then. And I was deprived of knowledge and naive. And that was really sad to me because I know I only suffered for several years and there are people out there who have suffered for most of their life. And to know that it's such an easy fix, um, it's frustrating mm -hmm. because it's still hard to get the word out. Yeah. But thank you for using your platform to do that and to be vulnerable enough to say like, I've, you know, struggled with anxiety or I struggled with some of these issues that, you know, sometimes people have a hard time even talking about those subjects. And I remember talking to, to Carrie Brown, for the first time and her talking about like depression and suffering with anxiety and and that was something that i struggled with and honestly it wasn't until we talked that i thought wow yeah i really made some forward momentum in that arena that i i thought i just kind of took for granted that this is just the way my life is going to be i'm always going to suffer with this anxiety and depression you know, and you get on keto because of like weight loss or for other things. And then it's almost like it's a side effect. And, and yeah, it's like, why did I live that way for so long? And, yeah. um, there was a quote and I, I actually wrote it down cause it's so beautiful. I wanted to, to have it in, um, its entirety, but you said being healthy and thinking you are healthy are almost indiscernible without perspective. After changing my eating habits more and more, it was clear I didn't know what healthy felt like. 
And wow, I don't think people can grasp how true that that is until they've been on keto for a while and seen some of the major health concerns reversed. So can you talk about what you settled for as far as healthy was in the past? So basically I had been in this place for so long where I, I hurt all the time. I had heel pain, back pain, neck pain. Um, I'm sure a lot of that was stress and anxiety that I was holding in my body along with poisoning my body because I was young and I thought I could get away with eating whatever I want and drinking every Saturday night and staying up till 3 a.m. And so that was the new normal. I thought that was just part of getting older, even though I was 27, which is like not old. Okay, no. <laughs> we know that. But in, in my head, I was like, I'm almost 30. And I mean, I guess this is part of it. And then... Uh, I had some more serious symptoms and I went to see a doctor and she was like, well, honey, it's just, you're, you know, you're just stressed out. It's work, it's life. You're a woman. That's just part of life, your hormones. And I had serious PMDD. Like I would get very, very, very angry over nothing, cry over nothing to the point where it interfered with daily living and my relationship and all that stuff. And it was that point that I was like, this, I don't think this is normal. I think that I am too young to feel this old. And I think that there's more to this. And then that's when I started doing a lot of research and finding forums and people on the internet that had Hashimoto's and had the symptoms that I was saying seeing at that early of an age. And I, I just realized this, the normal that we talk about, or we used to talk about now that we're woke, you know, we realize that's not it. But so many of my friends were feeling that way, that it just seemed like it was normal. Mm -hmm. But it, it's just not, it's not. So you've proven that you could be pregnant on keto. You've proven that you can successfully breastfeed on keto mm -hmm. and that you can lose all the weight. On and keto. even more, she's lower <laughs> than before her pre-pregnancy weight. So yeah. why was it so important for you to document it? Because you documented the whole process. So why was that so important for you to do that? Uh, well, I wanted to document it to prove it. I think that without proof, people just think that you're, it's just words until they can see it mm -hmm. and witness it and see the product of it as well. So. I wanted to make sure that everyone saw what I was doing and that I was getting results and I was getting real results at the real time that it, I was getting those results. So there is a timeline that I can be like, you can go back and see this happened then and I was eating this way then and, and now here I am and I'm still breastfeeding and I'm under 20 grams of carbs. Sometimes some days I don't eat any carbs and my breast milk is super awesome it's very fatty when i put it in the refrigerator it you know separates and it's like 50 50. Right. <laughs> it's, a lot of fat. <laughs> it's really awesome to look at but it's something i just really felt people are most people are very visual mm -hmm. they're visual learners and when they see a picture or they see a photo with a story they're more likely to listen to it and absorb it and maybe possibly implement it. Yeah, you're, you're totally right. And we get so many questions about this, but we're like, you know, Father Abraham and Sarah at this point, where we're too old for us to like show you by leading you. So I'm so thankful for you guys that you're willing to allow us to kind of have a, a glimpse of how you're doing that, just so that we can point people to in that direction. But I mean, it takes a lot of vulnerability on your point you know, on your part yeah. to be like, all right, I'll be in the fishbowl here a little bit, you yeah. know. But. So someone the other day yeah. asked us that if we were to do it all over again, because obviously our kids are all older, our youngest, are, we have two 19 year olds. So people, somebody asked us if we were to do it all over again, you know, would we have had our kids be keto, which obviously our answer is yes. But it's all hypothetical. But it's all hypothetical because, you know, it's like, right. it's for me now, it's like, you know better, you do better, but we didn't know better. Mm -hmm. But I think about what we fed our kids back then with lots of Raymond noodles and like, the, you know, how can we feed yeah, the entire family on $3 for the night, you know? Right. So what does baby Beckett's menu look like? What are your plans as he's getting older as he becomes a toddler and even maybe goes into, you know, elementary school, like, what are your plans with his diet, you know, is to try to stay, keep him away from the standard American sugar and garbage that people have. Right. And I just did a video on my YouTube channel, uh, baby led keto, which is just, I just made that up. That's not a thing yet, but I'm hoping that it will be. <laughs> it should be a thing. And so, 
I read this book while I was pregnant called Baby Led Weaning. And although I don't agree with all the nutritional stuff in it, the facts that a baby can eat and feed himself and eat the stuff that you're eating, I agreed 100%. And so we implemented that when he was able to sit up on his own and grab something and put it in his mouth. And so we started him out on eggs and went from there. So he, at this moment, he's seven months. He has six teeth. This kid has six teeth. <laughs> I'm sorry. I am just really, really sorry. Can I just say I'm sorry? Because that's, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, and, and I'm, I'm still breastfeeding. And so he gets most of his matri- nutrition still from breast milk. But he uh, now has had avocado, which he wasn't really a fan of. But he ate guacamole last night, and he really liked that. Um, steak, brisket, ribs, bacon, wow. chicken liver. Those are most of the things that he consumes on a daily basis. He, when we eat, he sits in his little high chair and we give him appropriate size amounts. So, you know, he doesn't choke or anything like that. And he just sits there and feeds himself. And sometimes he actually eats it and sometimes he spits it out. But like I said, he's getting his nutrition from breast milk. So the whole point of this is for them to learn eating habits, textures, tastes, flavors, and just he watches us, you know, he's learning from watching what we eat, how we eat it, what we put in our mouth. And so the plan going forward is just to continue to do this and introduce him to um, more foods. We are steering away from anything sweet Mm -hmm. until his first birthday, then we may have like a baby cheesecake or something for him. Um, But for the most part, he has savory things and is mostly meat based. And like I said, most, some of it, comes out and some of it goes down but he will definitely be a whole foods keto child until he goes to a birthday party and eats a cupcake and throws up afterwards and is like oh that didn't make me feel good and you know that's kids are learn they're going to learn from experience Mm -hmm. you can't tell them no no you can't have that because they don't understand why they can't have it all the other kids are eating it um maria emmerich she uh, feeds her children there. I think they're pretty carnivore keto based. And, uh, she was telling me that one of the boys had went to a birthday party and she was like, yeah, you know, if you want to try it, try it. And they got sick and they were like, no, no more of that. We'll have your brownies that are keto and we'll stay away from that sugary stuff. We don't like it. We don't like how it made us feel. And, you know, I believe if you give your kids options, you know, they'll usually make the right decision. Yeah. I think that's, that's really wise advice because you don't want to turn it into this forbidden fruit. That's like, you know, no, no, no. I mean, I remember uh, the best way to make me uh, listen to uh, a CD when I was in high school was have a a parental warning label on that. (laughs) And I'm like, that's the only thing I want to listen to now. right? Right. Exactly. I have a feeling, though, that baby Beckett will always have a special place in his heart for guacamole because that is what mom and dad made on their first date. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, and exactly. if anybody has not seen the video that y'all did, and you were still pregnant at the time. I was. They did, that I was, was big the sweetest, <laughs> sweetest date night video that that you just kind of shared, like, your relationship with us. Like, they, that was really, really awesome. But, yeah, he'll probably always love guacamole. He's got yeah. to. He's got to, yeah. It's like a built-in into his DNA, yeah. Yeah. So what is next for you guys? I mean, I'm sure, like, Dr. Barry is, like, going nuts right now not being able to get out to different conferences and things like that because I know he's always traveling for different conferences. I know he likes to get out there. What's next for you guys? Hopefully an album, a singing album, please. (laughs) You know, I've really got to get back and start singing, but I... I have a baby that is attached to me at all times. So it's really hard to steer away from him, but you're right. Dr. Barry is a traveling fiend. He (laughs) loves to get out. He loves to see people. He is an extrovert. I say I'm an introverted extrovert because I will put myself out there, but it drains me. He just builds off of it. He loves being out there. He loves people's stories. He loves getting the hugs and the thank yous and and hearing that he is making a difference out there. And it's, hard for him not to be able to interact with people face to face because that's something that he loves so much that it it wears on him he's I mean I we've had talks in the last few weeks about how like I can tell you're stressed and I can tell that you're uneasy and he's like we just got to go somewhere we got to get out of here we got to do something (laughs) like I know I know I know but you know we can't right now (laughs) but 
yeah, the conferences being canceled and not being able to meet you, you guys and people like you, like that's how we met you guys. And that's how we've met so many amazing people in this community. And this really is a community. It's mm -hmm. way more than just like a way of eating people in this community for the most part are so loving and kind and just want to share their story. And they're just eager to tell people about how they got their health back. And it's so awesome to see that in person because people like will just break down and cry yeah. because their life has changed so much and they are just so happy that they found something that brought them wellness that they continue to do and can continue to do. There's no end, you know, the pot of gold is there. It's going to be there forever. Right. It's not going away. The rainbow's not going to disappear. It's not going to magically stop working mm -hmm. one day. This actually works forever, for long term. Getting to meet people that have done it for 20 years because, you know, keto's not really new. Right. It's just become bigger in the past few years. So it's great to be able to meet those people and be able to refer them to other people. Like, see, they've been doing it 15 years. Yeah. It is, it's okay. You're not going to die. Yeah. <laughs> don't, listen, don't listen to the keto blog post. It's like, oh, no, ketones and Keto acidosis is not the same as keto. Right, okay? right. No. <laughs> well, and that I love how, you know, as you're going through different seasons, how you're saying, okay, you have to constantly be tweaking things. Like mm -hmm. there's some things that work that didn't work and, you know, you change your levels or you change an ingredient and, you know, and you get a, a different result. I was wondering what is some advice that you would give to somebody that's just starting out that you wish you would have done when you were starting out, like a mistake that, you know, you may have made. I have a video about that on my YouTube channel too. It's an older one, but it's a lot of things that people don't think about, like the reading labels and ingredients matter. And just because something is a keto food doesn't mean that you can eat all you want of it. Like heavy whipping cream is one of the staples, you know, in keto. Right. And a lot of people think that it has zero carbs. Right. It doesn't you know, yeah. and things like that, the little things that after a while will stall somebody, they start to catch up with you. If you'd known them ahead of time, then, you know, you would have just kept on going. So I think those kind of just nitpicky things that seem like people are being the keto police is just really trying to, like you said, what did I wish I would have known ahead of time? And a lot of those things I didn't know. I bought things Still, sometimes I'll buy something and turn it over and I'm like, what do you mean this is it? <laughs> right. like those, those chicken skins that I ate, the, those were so awesome. And I just assumed that they were cooked in a, you know, yeah, right. a, real, a real fat because it's a chicken skin. Why are you scared of the, that fat? But yeah, and to turn it over, it's cooked to canola. I was like, okay, <laughs> well, that's great. But it's like you said, it's a journey and you, it's a learning experience the whole time there. I think most people won't find their perfect keto that will stay for life because forever, especially for women, you know, our hormones change, mm -hmm. we go through changes and, and things that used to work don't work anymore. And things that used to not bother us now give us issues. So I think the main thing I would tell people is to pay attention to your body and do your version of keto that gives you the goals that you want and is giving you the wellness that you want. Well, just to kind of add on to that, cause you'd mentioned before, you know, you can do, you know, your eating plan is slightly different than Dr. Barry's. How do you guys lovingly habitate in the same space, have things, you know, tweaked a little bit differently, but still like respect one another? Because that's another question that we get a lot of times where it's like, what if my diet is different than somebody else that I live in the house with, you know? And even if it's a slight difference, you know, there can be arguments right. <laughs> over that. So how, how do you keep the peace in the kitchen? Um, we only ever had one discussion and that was while I was pregnant and I had a little slip up and he was like, well, you feel like crap because you ate blah, blah, blah. And I was like, you don't think I know that? I know that. <laughs> and that's like the literal only discussion we've ever had. We pretty much just stay in our own lane and respect the fact that we know what's best for our bodies and that I'm not an idiot and he's not an idiot. And so we know that the other person is, is going to do what they're supposed to do because we are educated and we do know what's good for us and what's bad for us. And so he trusts that if I stray, I'll come back and I trust that he's not going to harm me about it. <laughs> that It's wise. Let me tell you guys, it's wise. Like, you know, happy wife, happy life. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. So where can everybody find you? 
So I'm at Nisha Loves It on everything. Facebook, Instagram. My blog is Nisha Loves It dot blog. My YouTube is youtube.com slash Nisha Loves It. Um, you can find all of my links on my blog. So if you just go there, you can pretty much find me everywhere. And yeah, I don't have a book. I'm not as cool as Dr. Barry. You're but... cooler. But Wait, you're the that? person behind Dr. Barry, and that's the important thing. You know, it's like I I mean, we look at things, we're a team. I I am not her personality. She can do incredible things in front of a camera, but I need to be able to edit it. So without me, yeah. it doesn't work, and without her, it doesn't work. I mean, you guys are the yep. same way. I... Yeah, we we are a team, just like you guys. Man. Well, Nisha loves it and we love Nisha. So thank you so oh, much for you being here. And if you guys um, haven't subscribed, I don't know why yeah. anybody hasn't because she's just so fun. I'm actually the person who started watching your blog because I was like, oh, some of this stuff is really cool. Especially like the stuff on the Hashimoto's <laughs> and watching the baby grow up because that's when we started going like, oh, I really wish we would have done this kind of stuff with the kids. Well, so. and it also, I don't know, there is a comfort too in knowing when, when you're saying things as, as a mom and you're saying things you know as a woman the fact that she's a nurse also mm -hmm. so it's also coming from somebody it's not it, this is not a guess like she's she knows how our bodies work and you know how they interact and you've not just uh worked in labor and delivery but you've also worked with seniors as well so i i feel like you know i've, I've kind of had my mom been has been watching you because you know she's in her 70s and it's like the wisdom that you're sharing, it's really for, for all of us, you know, right. Yeah. Birth to senior citizen. I love that. Yeah. 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 Most of my nursing experience was from seniors. I worked at a long-term care facility for most of my nursing career. I was where I cut my teeth as a CNA and that's where I worked as a LPN and I worked there as a RN as well. And very few people understand how, much seniors need this. And I think yes. that that's a community that we haven't really reached well, and we're hoping to change that. Yes, yes. Well, Nisha, thank you so much for joining us. Hopefully we're gonna see you soon, maybe in Utah or one of the other things that are, hopefully as things start opening up, we'll be able to all get back out there to the conferences and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I hope so. Thanks so much for having me. This is fun, you guys. See you guys soon. Take care. So I don't think it's too difficult to see why we love Nisha. Yeah. She is an incredible woman and she is able to answer a lot of questions for women that, you know, people pose to us, but, but I'm an old lady at this point, you know, I can't tell you what it's like to be pregnant on keto. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you what it's like to be breastfeeding on keto. I can't tell you what it's like to recover from a pregnancy on keto, but she can answer those questions. Yeah. And I love that she is willing to, you know, be vulnerable and allow us to watch this process because again, We've talked about our kids are 19 years old. That's right. the, that's the youngest, but she is raising a baby and has the opportunity to raise this baby without, you know, being bogged down in sugar and carbs yep. like our kids were raised in. And we can see what happens. Yeah. We can watch this unfold. Yeah. So make sure everybody, you go and check out all of her different social media channels. Let us know down in the comment section who else you'd like to see us have here on Keto and Friends. Please do us a favor, hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye. Bye.